This is the headquarters of Cubic Corporation, a global transportation and defense company with 8,000 employees around the world. But there is more to Cubic than buildings and products. This is the story of the extraordinary man behind Cubic, Walter J. Zabel, its founder, president, and CEO for more than six decades. At age 97, Walter J. Zabel was far and away the oldest CEO of any publicly traded company in the world. What makes a man an extraordinary man? Extraordinary accomplishments would be one answer. Or as French historian André Malraux said, the difference between success and failure is not better abilities or superior ideas, but the courage one has to bet on one's ideas, to take a calculated risk, and to act. By either measure, Walter Zabel was an extraordinary man. His accomplishments in athletics and as an entrepreneur and innovator are many. His success was due not to inherited wealth or favors, but to his steadfast belief in his own ideas and in his ability to develop them, even when others said it couldn't be done. If Walter Zabel had a catchphrase, it would be this, you can't create experience. He repeated it again and again as he experienced life to the fullest for nearly a century. Walter J. Zabel grew up in Boston after his family moved there from Los Angeles when he was a young boy. In his youth, he was an academic and athletic standout. After graduating high school in 1933, he attended William & Mary College on a full scholarship, turning down a similar offer from Harvard. At 6 foot 3, 185 pounds, he was a star receiver and wingback. He was a student athlete. He loved sports. He was very, very competitive. He supported scholarship. The stadium at William & Mary is named for him. He has had a tremendous impact on this community and on higher education. Zabel married his wife, Betty, a fellow student while attending William & Mary. He was awarded a Bachelor of Science degree in physics in 1937. He played for the Richmond Arrows and briefly for the New York Giants before earning a master's degree from the University of Florida. He enlisted in the Navy, but was directed to continue working at a shipyard designing radar and communication equipment. Zabel worked on the Sparrow Missile Program with the Sperry Corporation in New York, and Betty worked in publishing. The couple moved to California in the late 1940s, later settling in San Diego, where they would raise two children, Walter C. and Karen. Walter C. Zabel has served as an executive at Cubic for more than 45 years. Shortly after Walter and Betty moved to San Diego, he got a job at Convair, at the time the city's largest employer. He worked on the Atlas and Terrier missile programs. In 1949, with some experience under his belt, Zabel decided it was time to bet on his own ideas. He formed HR Electronics, which operated out of the family's garage. In 1951, it became Cubic Corporation, in a storefront at Scott and Cannon Streets on San Diego's Point Loma. It had only one product, a device that accurately measured the power of microwaves. But the device sold well, and Cubic was profitable in its first year. In July 1956, it moved into much larger quarters on Kearney Villa Road. Three years later, it went public. A series of innovative electronic products followed. In 1958, Cubic began experimenting with Electronic Distance Measuring Devices, or EDMs. In 1961, it introduced the Electrotape, which was followed by the Autotape, both microwave EDMs. The Cubitape, introduced in 1971, used infrared light, the beginning of Cubic's expertise with light and lasers. These devices helped revolutionize oil exploration, pipe laying, and land surveying. The Electrotape and the Cubitape are in the Smithsonian Institution's collection. As for Zabel, he paid close attention to everything his company was doing. As a technician, Walt would walk into a lab, come right over, want to know what you were doing, what you were building, and get into it enough to maybe suggest something you could be doing a little bit better. Later on, you make formal presentations to him, he dives into the details. Cubic moved to a new building at its current location on Balboa Avenue in 1963. During the decade of the 1960s, Cubic grew by 588% with products that included high-tech antennas used to track missiles and Project Mercury astronauts, a long-range ship positioning system known as Argo, Votronics, an optical scanning vote counting system, and the nation's first electronic stadium scoreboard installed in 1966 at San Diego Stadium. 
Cubic technology also went into space for the first time in the 60s with Secor, a satellite that conducted a geodetic survey of the Earth. Its devices would eventually be on Apollo capsules and the Hubble Space Telescope. Zabel pushed for innovations and fresh ideas, and his employees delivered. By 1973, the company leveraged its expertise in data links and precision tracking to create the world's first air combat training system for Top Gun, the Navy Fighter Weapons School. The system was featured in the Top Gun movie starring Tom Cruise. Cubic entered the mass transit market in 1971 when it acquired Western Data Products of Los Angeles. A year later, it supplied its first automatic fare collection system to Chicago's Illinois Central Railroad. By the late 1970s, Cubic had installed fare systems in Hong Kong, Sydney, Australia, Washington, D.C., and for the second phase of San Francisco's BART system, and it developed the nation's first magnetically encoded plastic tickets. During this period, Cubic also developed a self-service ticketing system for airlines, a toll collection system for highways, and a freeway emergency call box system. As Cubic prospered, Walter and Betty became well-known figures in San Diego. For more than 40 years, they appeared regularly in society columns and at benefits for the San Diego Zoo, the San Diego Symphony, the Mingay Museum, UC San Diego Cancer Center, and other organizations. Among his high-profile acquaintances, Mr. Zabel counted the late Jack Kemp, a nine-term congressman, President Ronald Reagan, he described asking former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher what formal title he should use when addressing her. You can call me Maggie, she responded. In 1990, Walter Zabel turned 75, long past retirement age for most corporate executives. But as Zabel said, you can't create experience. He had not yet experienced enough and continued to push on. And so did Cubic. For the next two decades, the company continued to excel. On the defense side, its systems would become the gold standard for force-on-force -force virtual combat and air combat training for the U.S. military and many of its allies. Cubic's Mission Support Services segment would grow to seven operating divisions with more than 4,600 employees in 33 states and 20 countries. In transportation, Cubic would become the world's leading provider of automated fare collection systems, with 400 projects in 40 major markets. Overall, Cubic's revenue surpassed $1 billion in 2009 and $1.2 billion in 2012. For a television broadcast after he turned 90, Zabel revealed how his lifelong fascination with electronics began when he was a boy in Boston, and he acquired a crystal set, a simple homemade radio built from a kit. This is how I got it he heavily into electronics. I built a crystal set, but I didn't have any earphones. And so, in those days, of course, it cost an awful lot. $15 for a pair of earphones was a lot of money. I was sitting on the stairs outside, and a, and a truck went by, and a pair of earphones fell off. I don't believe it to this day. <laughs> anyway, there it was. <laughs> From that seed, a major technology company grew. But Walter Zabel's legacy extends far beyond Cubic Corporation. In addition to the stadium at William & Mary College, the theater at the San Diego Air and Space Museum is named for him. He is a member of the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame and founder of its San Diego chapter. An endowed chair at the engineering school at UC San Diego bears Zabel's name. I met Walter about six and a half years ago. He actually gets what we're trying to do here. The addition of the 3D, 4D theater, now the Zabel Theater, is the most significant addition to the Air and Space Museum in the last 10 years. He's a no-nonsense type of guy, and when we would sit in board meetings, and, and as many boards can go, there will be long discussions about things that maybe don't need much discussion, and, and in many cases it would end very quickly when he would finally just say, let's just do it and I'll pay for it. So that's kind of the the way he's been with this organization and, and from what I can tell and just about everything he does. Just as a handful of visionaries are credited with providing the innovative spirit that helped create Northern California's Silicon Valley, so has Walter J. Zabel had a profound influence on San Diego. Cubic Corporation and clearly Walter Zabel's leadership were instrumental in turning San Diego from essentially a Navy town into the high-tech hub we currently are. As he always said, some knowledge can't be taught. It comes only from living. I'm so enthralled by technology. 
when you have all this, all the experience, you just can't sit on your tail and, <laughs> and, and do nothing. What Zabel succeeded in creating, a company that transformed industries, provides products and services that enhance our national security and transportation services to 10 billion passengers each year, lives on as a testimony to his pursuit of excellence and his conviction that technology can make life better. He was an extraordinary man.